This is Matt Beck from FreeSalonEducation.com here with Splitting Hairs episode 39 and a half. Yeah, right? Technically. Yeah. Technically for you guys it's 39. For us it's 39 deja vu. Yeah. It's actually going to haunt me because you know that we're so excited about getting to <laughs> we're our, never gonna our get to one 40. year, 52, like or 40. But we uh, we did the episode 39 last week. We worked and, very hard. Yes, we did work very hard. It was another nighttime episode. And then what happened was we, my computer Died. blew up. So it didn't blow up. It didn't blow up, but it looked like it blew up. No, D- it did didn't you look, see the screen? I saw. It still didn't look like it exploded. No, it didn't look like. But it looked like it fried from the inside. Yes. So it man, destroyed. Technically, when we get to fifty-one, we'll be at our year mark. Technically, but we. I mean, no, because it's not. But we we've been doing it for a year. Episodes. That I don't want to talk about this right now. <laughs> but we had. Speaking of one year, I just looked. This week is one year that my ombre video has been up. Really? Yeah. One year ago, we started with that. Wow. I had my first video. I figured that would have been one year already. Like no, I just before. looked. Like last <laughs> cool. week when I went to go check the totals on it, it said 51 weeks. Wow. And Or no, it was I was going through my old Instagram pictures. I'll post that up on Facebook today then. Cool. That's cool. So um, so check out our uh, the rest of our YouTube videos. We're putting out YouTube videos constantly, free education videos for hairstylists. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. Um, welcome. We've been doing this now for 40 weeks, pretty much. And, uh, you know, keeping trying to keep it consistent every week. When I missed it, like when we missed last week, I tried so hard. I really wanted to put out that episode. But the challenge was Drea's um, camera and her audio didn't work. So that threw so things just off. Looking, or we should have done it like a silent film. Yeah. Where you show her and then put it up in well, the Well, that's background. basically what happened. I was editing it, and then I, I, I flipped to Drea's camera, and she's just like looking off into space. The words are going. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? So her vocals didn't work, and, uh, and my computer screen went. So I didn't get it out, and now it's like it's basically time for this episode. So, you know, we're moving in 39 and a half, and... Uh, and we'll just keep moving forward that way. We got Robert Cromine's interview this episode. Again. So again, I'm very excited to to have that on here. It was uh, you know a cool moment for me to be able to sit down with somebody that inspired me early on in my career. So we have that coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, I want to thank Millennium Systems International. That was actually where I did the interview with Robert. Was at the Experience in Fort Lauderdale, their big conference of the year. My favorite thing of the year. And then Demand Force, we uh, we did talk about them last week, but they've just done a lot for our business. If you guys don't know about Demand Force, check out demandforce.com because they it's basically a, a website that goes through Millennium and helps customer service in your business. It helps get you reviews. It helps confirm your clients via text, email. Um, there's just It does all the stuff so that we don't have to. Yeah. To make sure that we're just in so much more contact with our guests. Yeah. I mean, everybody is commenting on loving getting the text message confirmations. Everybody is. We don't even write business cards really anymore. Like no. with the with the next reservation on it. We don't even write them because they let them know two, three times yeah. as it's leading up to it that it's time for them to come. And then if we do the confirmation calls, that's another time. Yeah. So it's it's. Oh, amazing. So that's been really good. And I checked out the report because they give you reports on demand force. And I think it's brought in in the first month like $1,000 in revenue. So that's huge for Boom. you Paper guys as itself. hairstylists, bringing in clients that haven't been in in a long time, getting <laughs> them back. Um, and then, you know, and that's just going to keep growing. So I, I used to look at demand force like it was so expensive. But when you look at the fact it brought in $1,000 in a month, and that was only month number one, right? You know, it's just going to keep working. So Demand Force is cool. I'm glad that they're on board with us. Mizutani Scissors on Shop FSE. Um, check out if you guys want new scissors, then use Splitting Hairs, all one word, as a as a code. You'll get twenty percent off of anything in the store. So really? yeah. So I like the people that are dedicated to this show. I feel like you know I just <laughs> it was the chair. Good thing I didn't pick it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, people that are dedicated to this show and actually watch this. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, I like to give them, hook them up. So, that's going to be really annoying. Uh, Standish Salon Goods, thank you for allowing us to sit in these beautiful chairs and our guests at the salon to do that as well. And Freestyle Systems for the hanging blow dryers that are awesome. Uh, again, I said we have the Robert Cromings interview coming up. Tools of the week. 
um, we have a cool tool that Amika sent us. Um, Which one? The blow dryer. Okay. So oh, this this blow dryer is it's cool because we've we've shown the blow dryer before, but the thing I love about Amika, they just sent us a new look. So their blow dryers are kind of the same technology. I, they have different uh, models, but this one is the same as the other one, but it just has a whole different packaging. So what we were saying is it's cool because if you have a blow dryer that you love, but maybe you want to change up the the look, it's time the image of it. One. Maybe a guy likes a different look than a girl would. I don't know, but um, I like this look of, of this blow dryer a lot. Um, the black with the gold. It's a really flat finish to it. It's yeah. really cool. Neat. So it's got the negative oh, yeah. ion, positive ion flip, so you can decide what type of ions you want. Uh, the positive ions kind of help blow the cuticle out and get the water out and the moisture. And then the negative ions seal the cuticle. So really cool iron. So check out loveamica.com and uh, pick up that. I think I was talking about it last time uh, that hopefully they, they take a step towards uh, what Converse does and actually allows you to customize your own designs that can be printed on your own uh, blow dryer. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, that would be cool. And I think w we were saying like that, I think the industry will definitely move that way. Oh yeah. And hairdressers love having their name on stuff. Salons are getting products with their name. And I think blow dryers, just being able to put your own label and logo and all that would be a really cool idea. So if anybody has that idea, I don't want to work on it. <laughs> But it would be a you cool. You already did it. You just put your sticker on everything. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, or just order a bunch of stickers and stick them on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, the other thing is I was talking to Robert Reed. Um, I've been having meetings with him every week. He came out with the Ergo brushes, right? Love him. Um, so, and he's such a cool guy, super nice. And so, and I love talking to people that every time I get off the phone with him, I'm like, wow, I just learned like a bunch of stuff. Like he's just been in the industry for a long time. He knows a lot of stuff. So he came out with this brush that we've talked about in past episodes. So I'm not going to do a review on that uh, in this in this episode. But uh, the cool thing that he showed me, and this is just a little quick tip, is, and some of you probably know this, but if you don't, it's cool because we used to use the brush cleaner to clean out all the brushes and scrape it. And there's actually um, a ceramic coating on this that if you start scratching and damaging, then it's not good for the cuticle of the hair. So um, he doesn't recommend that you do that. What he said was take your damp towel from your guest that you've already used and just put it over the brush and wipe across the brush and it takes out all of the hair in the brush. And I, I was Voila. like, he told me on the phone, I'm like, okay, I'll try that out, whatever. <laughs> so I'm in the salon. And I finished and I had all this hair in this brush and I took the towel and wiped it over. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like this, One and all done. these years I've been like poking at it, going through and there's still each like individual the, hair looking off. for the hair. Yeah. And now you just take the, the, the damn towel and you just <laughs> wipe it on there and it works. So that's a pretty cool thing. And the other thing I like about doing that is it, it wiped all of the residue from the hairspray off the brush as well. So you got a really nice clean brush, spray it with some disinfectant wrap it in saran wrap and you're good to go bam brand new brush for your next guest so check that out guys that's a fun tip right enjoy it enjoy do it. you do you remember uh i just i like you know ergo because i think of the ergonomics and all that stuff but uh when i had my when i handed it to my guest the other day you were standing right there i was just talking about the brush and how it feels and you know with, with the grips and all that stuff and it's great and i handed it to my guest and her reaction was fantastic like i wish we were filming because it would have been a review. She's like, oh my God, I like this. This is fantastic. I'm like, all right, calm down. It's a brush. It's fantastic. She got really excited. Well, I just she talked to Robert like, us for it. last week. I think I'm going to start retailing them here. Nice. I mean, they're a great tool. I, 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 there's just no reason not to have them. Right. Here. So, And he's got a really cool program, so I'm going to check that out. And I, I want to have them on Shop FSE for hairdressers to buy. Some people have asked me about that. Um, I'm working on it. But, yeah. Sorry, I just thought of something. No, no, go ahead. About the brushes. Just the, the little bit of discovery that I made this week with the, the main purpose for the gigantic one. Uh, you know, we all have those guests that have kind of Can I see that hair. one, Thad? The big guy. The Captain Caveman. <clears throat> um, at first we were just using it because we wanted to take more hair off of the head, like take bigger sections and blow dry faster. But then I discovered this week, 
Uh, my favorite use for this brush is those guests that have curly hair that you're blowing out to try to get it smooth. You know, if you use really even just the one size down from this, when you're trying to round brush it, their hair still picks up so much curl anyway because it's got the natural curl to its texture. Right. And I've noticed that this guy is so big, it really helps because you still get the really smooth. You'll get that little bit of kick at the ends to make it look like a nice polished finish, but it's almost too big for the hair to actually to form its own yeah. curl again. So I was doing it. I was like, oh, my God, this is so much easier because normally I'd have to go back and like do it with the hair over the brush and then go back with it under the brush to get that curl out of it and keep it smooth. And with this, it was just one step. And I, yeah. I blamed the size. So I'm thankful for it. <laughs> you blamed it. The size. There you go. So that's how I put it. We uh Th- this brush, when I was talking to Robert, my, my big concern right now is if I sell this at hairdresser cost on the on at Shop FSE, then consumers could buy it at that cost as well. And I want to, so now I'm working on trying to advance Shop FSE so that you guys will have your own login as a professional. Because before, for a $500 pair of scissors, if a consumer is going to log on and purchase a $500 pair of scissors, then good for them for right. wanting to spend that much money on a scissor to cut hair at home. Mm. For this, it's a whole different right. level of, of shopping. So I want to make sure that consumers are not on our site. Hairdressers get it for the right cost and consumers would still pay a retail cost for it. Um, and then we last week on episode actual 39, you talked about your love of Candy Shaw. I did. And at great extent. Yes. So why don't you, maybe we should simplify that, but the Bali box, okay, which we don't have in front of us either. Uh, it's cause it's in use right now. Right. Um, all right. So we got the Bali box. I watched the DVD. Sure. Yeah. I loved, I love the DVD for a couple of reasons. One. And I got to say just, I mean, all hairdressers have a little bit of ego in them, I guess. And it it made me feel good because I feel like it helped validate me because when I put together the balayage videos, it was really just what I came up with because it's what made sense to me. Right. And to watch hers, our techniques are so similar in so many ways. It made me feel good because it let me know that I really did do what I was doing based on, you know, head shape and the fall of the hair and all that stuff. So... That in and of itself, I I loved the DVD, um, and I absolutely love the product. I yeah, mean, it's such an awesome, awesome consistency with that clay base to the lightener. It it helps to diffuse itself, so it takes some of that pressure off of getting such a precise line in yeah. it when you're working because just what it's made of, it helps to to soften that or diffuse that color a little bit for you. Um, the tools are fantastic. That brush, I've never used a brush like it. I didn't know what I was gonna think before I started with it. And now I can't imagine trying to do it with some, uh, like trying to work with this product with another type of brush. The bristles are yeah. dead on. The palette's super cool. I mean, it's it, it's a variation of doing the same thing like with the back of the hand, but it, it does end up being a little bit neater. Yeah, you don't have lightener in your hand, so you don't need to invent your glove anymore. Oh, I'm still gonna. You still <laughs> People need options. What's in here, Thad? What are we missing? You're missing the paddle, the brush, and the clips. Okay, so everything You're missing. <laughs> so there's so a box. well, uh, I grabbed the so lightener, this is put the that box. in there. It has to there's, be DVD. But the I'm just so there's a lot of different cool products. That check out the last episode, episode 38, with the interview with Candy Shaw, who created this product. I did an interview with her also at the Millennium Experience. And, you know, she's she's such a cool person. I love her product. Um, She allowed us to put it on shopfsc.com. So, um, you know, and a lot of people have been uh, taking advantage of it because it's just a cool, it's a cool product. And we've definitely seen the benefits of it. Yeah. So, so definitely cool. If you get a chance, check out the Bali box. It's it's a cool kit. I think it's one hundred nineteen dollars. Um, so just we'll hit on some of the other stuff that we've done with it later. Yeah, and Brian's gonna create some videos. We we just did a tip the other day. I actually after this show, I got a couple men's cuts. I'm gonna go edit those videos, get them on YouTube for the weekend, and then uh, next week I want to pump out a ton of videos because I'm going away on vacation. Mm. So I want to have videos just constantly flowing through YouTube. When you leave. 
I leave next Saturday. Okay, so we can do splitting hairs. So we're going to do splitting hairs. Um, the tough thing is going to be the week after that. So I got to figure out. Maybe I'll put out clips from our past. From, from 39. 39. Yeah, just break it up do or like something. like greatest hits? Yeah, <laughs> greatest hits. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <coughs> or I could just put out an interview. My interview with Martino. We could do a quick sit down next week or something okay. to lead into that. I'll figure something out. Yeah, so. Got step five we'll talk about out. that later. What? Did I get step five coming? He got step five coming, so we don't have to answer that question. People have been wanting more steps from you. Well, now that we're able to go back to Friday morning filming, that frees up our Wednesdays, so now we can start filming again. Yeah, we were doing splitting hairs on Wednesday nights. It's weird in the summer right now. Yeah. My son's I mean, a lot going not on. in school. Yeah. We, we're busy here in the salon. I mean, the salon's rocking right now. And um, so we've just been trying to toss around when we can film and when we can't, but it's, we're good. We're getting there. <laughs> um, working on it. We started a new thing this week, so we why did. don't you explain that? It came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, we were filming Wednesday night, and we try to get as many things in as possible. Like we have a very set amount of time to get this done. You know, we we close at seven, which means we close whenever the last person leaves, and then right. all right, let's get everything set up, and we get everything set up, and we have very very ambitious. Like we're gonna do four quick videos tonight, and then we go to do it, and it ends up we do like one. Yeah. And um, one of the ones, Matt wanted to do something on dry cutting, like focusing on just that. So we're thinking about it. You know, can you get 14 steps of dry cutting out of it? Is there a need for it? And we decided a much simpler but equally effective way to do it is going to be we're going to start tackling subjects, going through with a breakdown of the five main points of how, why, when, what, when, why, where, and how. Yeah. That. I had to say it over and over. You did. It My took problem a is every time takes. I say it, I put who in there as well. Yeah. So I can't say it. Um, it was my idea. Why, what, when, where, and how. And we're going to break down and we're going to answer those questions for each subject. So right. So we're he'll start, start with dry, dry cutting. cutting. And then eventually, you know, we'll get a style one, get a, or a specific kind of style one. Yeah. I, you know, you can do one for every single type of color. You can do a breakdown of ombre. You can do a breakdown of balia. I've been thinking about how the intro is going to go, like showing the words and stuff. I think it's going to be really cool. So it'd be a cool series. I hope you guys enjoy that. We'll start working on it probably next week. We'll definitely do the dry cutting one, and then um, and then we'll move on from there. And you know, so here it goes. Saying we're already we're stacking the things we're yeah. going to be doing. We're never leaving Wednesday. No, because that's the funny part is that's why it's a set amount of time because Matt has to leave by nine. Yeah. And so it's like, it's 8.57. Yeah. We're getting ready to start <laughs> filming. Let's go. Yeah. So, all right, cool. So that's pretty much what's on the lineup, what we got coming up. Um, let's go through. Do you have those questions at all from Facebook? No. From I where no I asked. questions ask. on Facebook. All right. Well, then why don't you talk about your, let's talk about your transformation or your uh, color correction that you did. Okay. And then, then we'll move into questions from social. Okay. Actually, let's you talk about your color correction. We'll move into Robert Cromines. Okay. And then we'll do questions from social. Okay. Then we'll spin the wheel. Then we'll do hair all, all day right. today. Fantastic. All right, cool. So uh, first thing, I I guess I enjoyed using the, the Candy Shaw Bali Box. I had two major color corrections last week. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you actually got to see them. And the first one was my guest was in for an ombre, new guest. And I'm sitting here and this girl comes walking up. And I knew she was my guest because I was the only one that had someone coming at that time. And she comes walking up and her hair's up and it's, she's just blonde, super blonde. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, what is she here for? She comes in, she sits down. I take her hair down and then realize like this is a horrible, horrible, just tragedy of color on her head. And I'm sure I'll, the picture's like popping up somewhere on the screen now. So I'll send it to you. Where do you want it? Where do you want the picture? In pic between. <laughs> okay. Um, she uh, basically, she had gone uh, to get ombre twice, two different salons. The first one just took everything from her parietal up and basically just bleached her roots to ends. The second time she went in for ombre, because they left her completely natural, all dark underneath. Second time she went in, the hairdresser just foiled a straight line of blonde across the back of her hair. So it was just a straight line and it was just 
awful. So I found that line where they had kind of left her sectioned off. I went through the lower half of the hair <clears throat> and just did a really heavy handed ombre using the Bali box because I knew one thing that I like about that lightener is it does have good control. It has good timing, even with, you know, the higher developers, the 30 and the 40, you know, I feel, I, I guess I feel like it never shoots way beyond. I mean, for it to go. Yeah. I used 40 with it yesterday. Yeah. I did too. And the hair feels fine. Mm -hmm. It gets light without going crazy on you. Um, and then up top, I basically did the opposite. She had the blonde. So I went in, I found a color that was pretty dead on with her natural. And I created the negative space. You know, the, the V that I create with lightning when I do balayage, I pulled out my V section and then just painted in the dark in the middle so that it looked like the V was there. And when it was done, she left with an ombre. She was super happy. It was awesome. And then the next day, another girl comes in. She's just in for a single color and a haircut. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going to end my week. It's Sunday. <laughs> Week's over. It's fine. Almost done. She comes in. Her hair's also up in a bun. I'm like, all right, so what are we going to do? And she takes the bun out. Thad was working right next to me. And this thing just unrolls like a cartoon. Like she had the longest hair ever. And it's all like one length almost and just thick, thick, thick. And I'm like, oh, of course. Was she your uh, natural nine? Was she what? No, that was, yes, yes, that was her. Uh, naturally, she was at least a nine. I was, I, I was she so was? angry at her because I want to be that blonde. She had a half inch of her and it's almost like white. And uh, of course, she wants to be dark. So this ended up being a color correction because, and this picture I'm guessing is coming up here again. Um, Somewhere in there. <laughs> she, uh, she had said she went to a salon months ago and said she wanted to be dark red. And she said they made her hair black. And she was very upset. She goes back, tells them she wants red. So instead of doing anything about the black, they just put a red over it, which just created... Which drives me crazy. Right. Like, why are there... Don't be lazy about what you do. Like, who? when you're at the salon, your job is to do the best job that you can do for the client in your chair and don't half ass anything. I'm right. I, like, Suck it up how long it's going to take. Like, I love that this happens because then they come see us and right. we get to fix it. I love that. As soon as I started to get into her hair, I mean, it was a very, I told her, I was like, you're just going to have to excuse me for a second. Cause I really had to just stand there and like look at her hair and figure this out because what basically happened. And this is uh Corey curls on Instagram asked me a question. And I said, I would answer it on the show cause it was too long to, to put on Instagram. Uh, her hair to look at it, her ends were completely solid black. The mid shafts were just this weird fadey brownish kind of color. And then she had random black bands through her hair, more like patches than bands. And then a half inch of level nine regrowth. Yeah, I don't think that picture you put up did it justice of the before. No, you it know? didn't. But I was at that point, I was like, I needed to get this going. Yes. <laughs> You're like I mean, it analyzing was, it, taking pictures everywhere. Yeah, I know. The whole thing. It was the end of the day, and it, there was so much hair. The only way I could get all of it in a shot was to kneel on the ground and shoot it up because it was so long. To get far enough away to get all of the hair, you couldn't see any of the color in it. I got to be honest, though. I just started thinking. When I was at the dentist last week, the uh, he took a picture of every single move he made in my mouth, which is kind of weird, but he had this little camera get that thing. To pop out. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> but he had this little camera thing and he puts it around and it just like right out your tooth. So every, like he would like drill a little bit and then he would take a picture. Like we should do those kind of things step by step, just not even to post on Instagram. I mean, we all do that. Right. But as a documentation. Maybe just to know where you've been. Yeah. And to show the guest where you've came How cool from. would that be to be able to have that in like the guest profile? Yeah. Like we can't, I mean, we that's what it did. Every time he there. took a picture, it was going into my profile. So he had visit from from Tuesday. It, it documented every photo of everything that he did so he could reference back to it. I think that that would be an awesome thing. Me too. I don't know. I know Millennium does let you put pictures in it. Oh, so, Like, can we put lots of pictures in I it? I think so, honestly. Like, we can do it before and after with each person? We'll have to figure out how that connection happens, and maybe I'll give Millennium a call and just say, hey, I have an idea. Well, we might have to have just, like, a salon camera that we just hook right up to the thing. Yeah. That stays at the front desk. I mean, it's so easy yeah. to create. I think we got one. 
create a, right to create a folder on the computer that would just you just name the folder the guest's name. Hmm. That would be easy to search. I like it. Um, yeah, let's do that. So yeah, I I didn't want to half-ass it. I was looking at her hair and I knew it was going to be like a real undertaking, but I had to do it because her hair needed it. So what I ended up deciding to do, I went through, I did a very, again, a very heavy handed, I think I did a half a head of balayage on her, really making sure I concentrated anywhere that I found that black running through her hair <clears throat> because she still did want her hair very dark, but with flashes and dimension of a lighter red. So got through the ends, let it really just lift up and get some life to it brought her back completely dried her and then put a really great formula together with the shines xg and uh roots to ends let it process and we were both really again i'm not sure that after i really that's where i started to get a little tired because i was working on her for a little over five and a half hours and uh by the end like i went through i smoothed it i ironed it but when it came time to do the pictures i'm just thinking to myself i'm like all right, this picture's fine. Let's go. And so I hope the picture does enough justice because yeah. it was just on my phone. But she was super stoked. I mean, I was getting texts from her and her boyfriend all night, you know, thanking me for coming and taking the time and all that. I'm like, oh. That's is. how you win them over, you know? Like, that's because it's real customer service. It's it's the way that people should be treated. And I think that, I think it's cool that you went through all that. The picture thing, the picture's Pictures are tough, especially when you're, you know, snapping phone with pictures your phone. are tough with hair. I but, don't care how good they say the camera is. Yeah. I just realized I didn't answer the guy's question. Oh, what was his question? His question was why did she have the black ends and the, the lighter mid shafts? Okay. It's just because um, <clears throat> when you're dealing with hair that long, you're dealing with very, very old hair. I mean, those ends are years, 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 years old. And no matter how good a care she takes of her hair, it, it's old. It's been through wear and tear. It's going to be a little bit more porous. So when they went through and put that black in her hair and the red and all that stuff, it's just like a, a, a sponge. It just held on to it, and it's going to hold on to it. Is it like a damp sponge? <laughs> I don't even want to start with that analogy. <laughs> but when you really got into her hair, you could almost see that transition of where the damage starts to get okay. worse because it really did fade into that black end and uh the mid shafts it's not necessarily that they were lifted so much it's just that they were a little bit healthier so it held on to probably the same amount of red that it should have and as it faded out it just faded to that weird warm brown kind of color right and uh i'm guessing that the random black patches were just random damage sites that held on to the color for whatever reason yeah so Okay. So there's the answer to your question, Corey Curls. Cool. And th and that's the thing. Uh, we love questions. And if you guys have questions, please post them below. Um, sometimes it's a challenge to write back an answer. Right. Because that it, it, I can't answer anything. And and there's yeah. And there's also like a lot of different situations that you know. It could be very many, uh, very different answers, and maybe we both have a different opinion. So, uh, so definitely. Uh, if you stay tuned to the shows, you'll see the answers pretty much. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, I finally think I, I answered that one question. Yeah, good job. <laughs> so, um, so we're let's go to the interview with Robert Cromines. Awesome. Uh, Robert Cromines is the global artistic director of Paul Mitchell. I got to sit down with him, and honestly, just to introduce Robert, uh, the only thing I'm going to say is that I I saw Robert Cromines for the first time ten years ago on a stage. Uh, sat there, listened to every word that he said. Five years later, I had moved halfway across the country to work in, a, in this salon and ended up buying it. And um, at 25 years old, I never could have ran a salon without the advice that I got from the guy you're about to listen to. So, um, you know, I followed him for 10 years. I, I pick pieces apart from him just to, I, I took my payroll structure, my um, systems that I developed. I mean, the guy came up with the color bar, you know, the wash house. These are all those things. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this interview and we'll see you right after. Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I'm sitting here with Robert Cromines. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Matt. Good to see you again. So uh, this is, um, I'm going to say that this moment would probably be compared to when you sat down with Sassoon for me, because 
for 10 years now, I've watched you, you know, followed everything that you've done and tried to do it in the best way that I could. So um, it's an honor to sit down with you and, and have a talk. Well, one of the most beautiful things about my Vidal Sassoon situation was the beautiful compliment he paid me. And I just got to say, I've looked at your business from a distance from the day you took it over. And I'm so proud and happy to congratulate you because you're doing a remarkable thing every day in your business. I think everybody knows how I feel about the industry. I hate the wannabes, I hate the pretenders. To dress up like a rock star is easy, but to live it at home is the hardest. And why I love you is at home you're living it and you're doing it, and that makes a big difference to me. Well, I appreciate that. And I think that, so I want to talk to you about, I guess the, the few things, I guess if I ever got to set, sit down with Robert Cromings, I would say is, I, I want to know about, you were from Tennessee, right? I, or you're not from Tennessee, no. but you lived in Tennessee. Yeah, I did. And you did you start doing hair there, or? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the kind of record book goes, I was a young kid in Scotland. I wanted to be a hairdresser, but didn't have the courage. My family didn't support it. So my mom did a beautiful thing when she was young. She married an American citizen that was in the military. So I actually had an American passport. Okay. And at the age of 24, I decided I had enough of the UK. I got in my car. I drove to the airport. Didn't tell a f single person. I got in a plane, came to America, and I had relatives, distant relatives in the States that lived in Memphis, in the Mid-South, Mississippi. So within about three weeks of getting to the States, I went right to beauty school and enrolled. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm in school maybe three, four months, and they come in and pop in a video of Paul Mitchell and JP. So when I knew nothing about the beauty industry, I made a decision in school because Paul was Scottish. He was a little crazy. I'm like, that's my guy. Yeah. And today, if you look at what I've accomplished, what I've done, all started from the same beginning, that same path. Uh, I made a great choice. And I was talking to some kids outside. I delivered pizza for a living. Got, once got robbed at gunpoint, you know, <laughs> nearly right. lost my life. And I thought, well, if I'm going to go through all the struggle of this to become a hairdresser, I'm going to make it pay off. Right. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to do to honor my, st uh, my teachers when I was in school. And I decided in school I'd get more out of my education than any other kid in our school. And I think I did that. So you never know where it's going to come from. And the other thing that I'm really passionate about is the loyalty. You know, I've been with Paul Mitchell nearly, you know, uh, 30 years. Yeah. And I really believe in that. It's really about believing in something and sticking by it. And, you know, for me, it's about the consistency. So, you know, anybody that's in love with a company and they stay with them, I'm like, well, I love you for that because you're loyal to it. Right. Uh, too many people are quick to change and move into different things, just kind of becoming opportunists. This industry is unfortunately built on people to believe in, like Vidal, like Paul Mitchell. Arnie Miller from Matrix was a man worthy of believing in. And I really get a little worried for the future of the industry because I don't think we're putting so many people out there to believe in. Right. And that's why your organization is so critical. We need to get some new faces out there that people can start to believe and trust in the same way the last generation believed in its old leaders. Right. So it's a beautiful business, but you've always got to play it forward. But it's about that commitment, and it means a lot to me, even as a salon owner. You know, people come and join and move on. They're nomads. Um, to me, get involved in something. Stay true to it. Put your time in. Write a passage. And the craziest things you could ever imagine can happen to you just like they happen to me. But being loyal is a big part of it. So, you know, you think about loyalty and uh, the people you hang around. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I've just been so fortunate to be believing in one company. People used to laugh at me as a kid. Oh, you're the Paul Mitchell guy. Right. They don't laugh today, Matt. You yeah. know, they kind of go, oh, I wish I'd done that. Right. I remember kids saying in school, I wish I'd done what you did. I go, what was different about me? He goes, you would buy products out your own pocket to use on your beauty school clients. I yeah. said, what did that make you think? He said, I wished I had. Yeah. It's a choice. And I think that's the part we have to understand. Every company can give you the opportunity. Nothing's in your way. And unfortunately, people seem to develop this false evidence. Well, because of that, I can't do this. Well, that's not what we're about. Nothing's in our way stopping us doing anything. Right. To be creative in the modern world is getting around that. And that's where my creative genius comes in. I don't care what obstacles are in front of me. My job is to find a curious way to get around it, and whether yeah. that's business or hairdressing. And you know me, that's how I think. So, um, you know, I'm a natural problem solver. Right. And I, I think that's a great part of my ingenuity. It's a hard thing to find in a person is a problem solver. A lot of people come uh, will come to you looking for the answers, I think. And it's even when you do hair shows or even when we're, we're filming this, I think it's like everybody comes to the one person for all of the answers. And I think that, I think what's cool, um, you also mentioned about beauty school, buying your own products. Uh -huh. I, I remember when I was in school uh, 10 years ago, I had 
I bought all my own Paul Mitchell products because I saw you at a show. I didn't know that you had done that, but I wrote my name on the bottle because you had to keep it from everyone. Uh And I lined them up on the station, and I was so proud of just... And it, it, I don't think it was ever about the bottle. I mean, I saw you talking and I saw that it was, there was just so much more to the industry that I figured out at, on that, at that moment. And that's what I wanted to go for was to be able to inspire people and to, you know, it, it, the Paul Mitchell part of it for me was that it was a connection to a group of people that I looked up to. And so I think, uh, you know, with creating free salon education, it's just uh, an evolution of that and that path well you know the world needs to be educated and inspired and unfortunately the industry is very new every year it's like exfoliating itself you know if you i do a lot of trade show stuff if you miss a trade show for two or three years you walk around and people just wonder who the weird guy in the hat is right you got to be present you got to be active you know and you got to keep doing stuff to keep that energy but you know the, the people you believe in and just like you may not have known my story but you were prepared to do something remarkable compared to everybody else and every day I'm looking for that talent of the future people are prepared to do I've got a young kid works for me his name's Austin Parent I got him from the Connecticut school this kid works on his days off in a salon he doesn't even work in come prep water and do stuff uh, the kid wants my job so bad I can taste it and he's gonna get it yeah uh, I did an $800 retail day with him as my assistant the other day I had 1600 in service revenue and at the end of the day he Facebooked me and said if you could have just done two more clients Robert <laughs> we could have had a two thousand dollar day there you go that's S- the push so what I love is yeah I do have a bit of control and influence over a lot but I'm influenced also by the young generations of hairdressers and it's for them that I think we owe the industry to give them that fellow legacy that we had something to believe in whether it was me that crossed your path um, they need that same thing and who are going to be their heroes of the future and that's the part that I want and be listening to this that why not you why not one of you because in the absence of leadership any numbnut can take the microphone right and I have a real issue with that I care about the beauty industry too much and uh, before Vidal passed away one of the things he said to me is I'm gonna leave this to you now mr. Chromines and I'm like wow I don't think I can do it single-handedly, but me and a few guys like me, we can keep this moving yeah. and continue to change an industry and how it thinks about it in the same profound way he did many years ago. Um, on one of the interviews I did with him, uh, he talked to me when he had a seven-chair salon. He was doing a photo shoot with David Bailey. The correct title to David Bailey is Sir David Bailey. He is one of the f- most famous British photographers in the world. Uh, Vidal's at the shoot, and David says to him, what's wrong with you today? Something's up. And he said, well, I have a seven-chair salon, and four of my staff just quit. Oh, wow. The one that stayed was Annie Humphreys. And through that devastation, as he spoke to me on the microphone about it, I could feel the emotion like it happened just yesterday, even though it was 50 years prior. I mean, you never forget that. Now, you would never imagine this icon, Vidal Sassoon, could suffer a walkout. Right. So if it could happen to me, it could happen to you, it could happen to you, Matt. I'm just saying these are the things we kind of show people through our experience. Vidal, as a kid, had the worst Cockney accent in the world. He couldn't understand him. And he knew in order for him to be the great Vidal Sassoon, he'd have to learn to talk eloquently. So he went to acting school to learn how to create words and noises. And I don't know if you ever heard the man speak. He's one of the greatest public speakers you'd ever hear, um, just in his word power. So the way he would make cheekbones and you know jaw lines and diff- different descriptors about facial features he made them sound like so sexy you yeah. know um, <laughs> the passion in his words and everything else there's no doubt in my mind why he became one of the greatest leaders it wasn't what he did with scissors the way he communicated he was the most outstanding communicator I've ever seen and that wasn't natural it was by choice right so that's what I love is when you look at somebody's beginning story just go back to my beginning story delivering pizza going to beauty school at 24 you know most kids start at 18 and 20 that's my biggest regret where would I be today if I started at 18 so when you get around people's beginning like John Paul my mentors lived in his car for two years started a company with 700 bucks uh, and now he's one of the fifth richest men on the planet right. He used to work for one of our competitors I'm not gonna mention their name and he was fired many years ago and they told him he wasn't management material nice <laughs> I, I love that story because how can you imagine so in your world of what you think a manager is John Paul is one of the most outstanding managers remarkable in every way yeah so it's a beautiful thing when you can look at the history of it and get around people that can really inspire through their beginning story to help you f- develop your beginning story we all start somewhere right and success is a wonderful thing but 
it's not a destination after three weeks, it's a journey of life. And definition of success to me is every day you're getting closer to your dream, you're successful. Right. Whatever that may be for you. And even to watch Vidal Sassoon, uh, Vidal Sassoon's dream process and what was success to him, um, his success was working off of an industry that became better because of him. Uh, we used to do photo shoots for Vogue magazine. We were treated like slave labor. And he changed all that with Richard Avedon. And he started to become an acquired result that instead of get the hair, he was like, the hair's not done yet. You'll wait on me. I'm Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> right. uh, he started creating a whole prestige to it. So an industry that was generally getting no money for haircuts. The only haircuts we were doing was cutting off fish hooks of perms. We were giving it away for nothing. He stood up and said, I'm going to invent a design called precision haircutting. And to a degree, if a client came in for a shampoo roller set, he would turn them away. To the degree, to be different, to get right. that new thing, yeah. he would turn away customer because that wasn't what he was about, to be clear on the vision and being true to that vision every day. No right. compromise. Yeah, sometimes things it, get watered down. Absolutely. And people start to just water down, dilute. Too many you're left avenues. With. Be true to your vision. Stick to it. Be true to your business. And I'm just saying, be influenced by people. You know, if you take from one person, you're a stealer. If you take from many, it's research. And what I'm very happy to do in my world, I travel the globe. I look at other salons. I study other salons, competing lines, um, other salons from different cultures, because that helps me be a master of it. But to me, at the end of the day, people need stuff to believe in that's tangible. And they need accurate information. And they also need to know how they interpret the dream. Yeah. You've got to be interpretive. A lot of people don't know this, but I coached the military and we opened salons there. And I invented a concept called Color Bar. Well, the military have their own way. They call it Color Ops. Okay. They call take-home provisions. What I'm saying is I'll put it out there, what I'm doing, but it's their job to interpret that. Don't go, well, I don't have a color bar like that. Your job is not to build a color bar like mine. Your job is to interpret it in your dream. Right. Your salon's your dream. You're in business for yourself, but not necessarily by yourself. Yeah. So that's kind of where we come into play. So, you know, smart-minded people, just like great hairdressers, I just think there's not enough business. And, you know, we're here yeah. at the Millennium Conference. I love this conference because I yeah. keep score the same way these people do, we do, our schools do. So it's very apples to apples. Yeah. So this conference is one of my favorites I do. Uh, not the biggest audience I do in some of these rooms, but the intent, and I know I speak hairdresser here, an owner yeah. here, they know I do what they do. So, um, you know, the business part, hairdressers will spend 50% of their career, 80% of their career watching another haircut, another color technique, another updo. Yeah. When you can get on the internet without leaving your living room, find <laughs> more information right. you can imagine. And yet, how much time do we spend developing the dialogue, the DNA of success, looking at vital signs, indicators, labor costs, you know, all these different fluctuating points. We've got to be kind of schizophrenics of the modern world, half businessman, half artist. Right. And I think that's a big part and why this particular users group, and I love that name, users group, <laughs> like we're addicts. But um, what I love is there's some very successful business owners out here, some bigger than you and I, and we're pretty big boys ourselves. And that is humbling that people even at $3 million scores are coming in to find out new material. Right. I don't care who you are and how good you got it. Something can change every day that has to make you adapt your new system. So it's understanding that no matter what you built, there was a guy before Sassoon came along. His name was Teasy Weezy. He was the first hairdresser of his own private jet. He had an entourage of 32 people that traveled with him. He wow. was a roller setting king. He did Hollywood movies. He's been credited on Hollywood. When Vidal started this precision haircutting, Teasy Weezy said that'll never catch on. Oh. Teasy Weezy died many years later, broke. Okay. Meaning you cannot define what will change. Yeah. It will change. I love when I interviewed Vidal, I, I said, tell me about the blow dryer. He said, do you mean the hand dryer? <laughs> and he talked about how that was invented and the way it came alive. Yeah. And I said, did you invent it? He said, no, many people at the same time made the discovery. You know, I had a lied and said I did. <laughs> I just love the fact that there's commonality. We're all sort of getting closer to it. And there's multi times people discovering at the same exact moment. Right. So who owns it? I'm not quite sure, but that understand that you've got to keep reinterpreting your business year after re re it never stops yeah i mean i, t I went at the end of my business class i have a slide that has a picture of a old movie theater and it's being torn down and it says on the sign it says uh that's all folks thanks for 30 years and what i say to everyone is that business still looks 30 years old yep. and that's what happened the evolution of a movie theater now is lazy boy recliners yeah. and and you know alcoholic beverages and a server at yeah, your thing yeah, so yeah. if you don't evolve and go with the times i mean that's what's great about this conference everybody's using pretty much computer software yep. and everybody's 
listening to every word that every artist is sharing about numbers and systems and all of that. Well, it's said, and I can't datify it, 20% of the industry is automated. And it can only be really one reason. Some people don't want to declare everything, so they want to hide. And I'm just saying, yeah, I, I love being an American. I love paying taxes. And I, I think there's some other benefits. Uh, it's part of what makes the world go around. And you think I pay a lot of taxes. I imagine what John Paul must pay. <laughs> right. And yet I remember the first tax bill I got it was $100,000. My partners got upset and cried and I got happy because I knew if I had to pay a hundred grand, I must have made a million bucks. Exactly. So to me, it's part of what the American dream is. It's part of what we got to do. Automation, if you can't inspect something, you can't correct it. Hairdressers for years have worked for 25 years, end up in the grave, and never got what they were capable of because they never looked at the success and the footprint success leaves behind. Until our industry starts keeping score in a similar way, we'll never get to what's possible. So with your show and what we could do collectively, I'm just saying, it's not the size of your salon. Pick up Mevo. It yeah. doesn't matter how big you are. The point is, no longer can we work off of paper books. We've yeah. got to start quantifying it because kids that join your company have a career path in mind. And if I'm going to accept you as an employee, I've made the exchange promise that I'm going to help you develop your dream. Right. I can only do that not with emotion, but with absolute data of here's where you are, here's what you got to do to get what you want to do. Yeah. And numbers help me do that. So if it can't be inspected, it can't be corrected. I'm sick of giving people information. I want to give them transformation. Enough talk. It's like Charlie Brown's parents at a hair show. I go to <laughs> hair shows everywhere, and I listen to other guys. I say, wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Like, what are you saying? Too much talk, not enough action. Right. I said it today when I still opened up the show. Stop taking shit. Start doing shit. Get busy. Make your own show. Make a video. Do a photo shoot. Get out there. Put it out there. Right. Too many people are waiting on Ed McMahon to knock on their door and go, you just won a million dollar sweepstake. You got to get it out there. And I'm just saying every day I'm seeing kids that are doing what it takes uh, and not being denied because nobody can deny you what you're after, uh, not your color of skin, your educational background, where you live. I don't care if it's the Mid-South, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Nantucket. It matters not. Yeah. Uh, I started in Memphis, Tennessee. So Andy could come in from anywhere. Um, you don't need to leave, live in New York or Manhattan to get right, it all. I started in Iowa. so It makes no difference. Yeah. So that's the beauty of the beauty industry. And, you know, the people that you can study and the people you can look with on the Internet and Facebook and really get all these ideas and then start to create your own opinions. You know, uh, I see a lot of guys post on Facebook what they don't like. I'm so sick of hearing what people don't like. Tell me what you love. Right. Tell me what drives you crazy with passion because I too much negatory in the world. Yeah. So I'm more interested when I hear platformers is what, you know, what they're about, not what they're not about. You know, what they like about the beauty industry, not so much of what they don't like. I see a lot of people out there playing the hate game. Yeah. Like they're player haters, like we're rap stars. Yeah. You know, we have this, they don't have so this. Don't, it's, yeah, know, it's back. Now, pointing to the manufacturer, well, they're the manufacturer. Where would we right. be in the beauty industry without manufacturers like Paul Mitchell, Aveda, Tony and Guy? Right. The industry would be so fragmented, so scattered. Uh, we need people to believe in. We are committed 100%. Um, I'm a rock star, movie star, platform artist, but I travel with 10 others that are just as famous as I am. Right. And we've got six, 700 educators. I Meaning we believe this stuff, and it's about the legacy we leave behind. So manufacturers are not the devil, and businesses that are profitable are not the devil. You know, we're pro for profits, the American dream. But what do manufacturers do? They help unite an industry. They give salons of independent stature, a voice, a connection point. So to me, even though I'm the Paul Mitchell guy, there's a reason why I buy Paul Mitchell. Because what I need more for my salon empire is staff. Right. And what they grow more than any other company I've been affiliated with is staff, future professionals. So, you know, when you're picking a company, it can't just be, well, I'm not going to use Paul Mitchell. They've been around for 1980. They're old news. Well, if you looked right. at this lately, we're like cornflakes. Rediscover cornflakes. Because when I'm coaching your business, what I think you need is staff. I think you need is systems. We provide those free for just being a customer. A lady asked me, can I get you into the salon? I said, well, I'll tell you, it's going to cost you money because you're not a customer. Right. Uh, if you were my customer, you get me for free. So there's a benefit to it. And I'm just saying that if you've got something to do, manufacturers are a great avenue. Um, my manufacturers helped me become an icon of the beauty industry. And not many manufacturers would let a little guy become up and be as big as they are because right. they'd be feared that he's going to go break away and start his own product line. Well, I'm not inspired by having my name on a product line. I once had my face on panties. That was some cool shit. <laughs> but to have my name on a bottle of shampoo, every day I see a bottle of shampoo with the name Paul Mitchell on it, I feel that is my name. Right. I am happy to say that I am a product of Paul Mitchell from Beauty School on. The success I've enjoyed is thank you to the company I've represented loyally for 30 years. 
Um, it's really that simple. Yeah. Put your time in. You know, it's the rite of passage. Believe in who you're around. Find the people that speak to your heart. Not just people say, oh, come work for me. I'll pay you more. Right. You may take that deal and hate it. I'm just saying if something speaks to you, a company speaks to you, that's the indicator you're looking for, that that's the company you should join. And the same success I've discovered at Paul Mitchell, I don't doubt that you'd find that same journey within your grasp. You know, yeah. It makes no difference. And I think that it's just all about taking the opportunity. And I... I did not plan on waking up today talking to you, so I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I didn't even bring bathing suit to this event, you know, because I knew that this is, I want to spend the entire event talking to people like you. And, you know, I, I don't need to be at the beach. I can do that other times. Yeah. And just spend the day learning about the business because that's Absolutely. what's going to make you, um, Maybe you know. Maybe 15 years ago, I'm in China with John Paul. We launched there. And he said to me the next day, because he's such a papa to me, I'm going to take you to see the Great Red Wall, uh, China Red Wall. Yeah. You can see it from satellites looking down. It's such a man-made fixture. Wow. And I said, no disrespect, John Paul. I can see that on Discovery Channel. I'm going to go visit Chinese hair salons. In that trip is where I found Wash House, Dark Room Shampoo. So, again, the thief, the pirate I am, taken from many. Yeah. Um, if I had went to see the Great Red Wall, I would have missed out on an opportunity to come up with a concept that has revolutionized how people think about their salon sink. Yeah. Um, so when I look at the concepts I'm able to find, it's not because I'm so smart. I'm just lucky enough to get out there. Yeah. And I'm able to see and subtract like Salvador Dali, seeing what other people didn't see. It makes a big difference. So I think you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Life is too short. So many people come to the show for the party. Right. Um, there's so much you can do. And you decided to come into this millennium experience and get the most out of it. Yeah. We had this set up actually in our hotel room on the round table. And then last night I was like, you know what? Maybe we should put that on the big stage. Let's just ask. Let's just ask and see what happens. You know. And then it ended up here and now we're with and you. John, are you charging for rental? Yeah. Do I have to pay for this? I don't know if you heard that little faint sneeze. That was John Harm. He's got a little <laughs> sneeze like a little girl. I'd hate to hear him fart, to be quite honest. <laughs> so one... Very last thing, Mevo is coming out. Yes, John showed the um, uh, John. It's called uh, gamification. Gamification. So, what is exciting you about this? Because I'm I'm floored, and I can't wait to bring it into my salon. Well, so, what? I hope John Harms never hears this. Uh, yeah. But when I first became a, a customer of his, and we made a partnership at Paul Mitchell. He explained how robust Millennium was, and boy, is it. And for guys like him, programmers and all their team, yeah, but we're hairdressers. Right. So I think there's two great things about this new breakthrough. One is it's a streamlined version of it, but what I love is 60% of the industry is now independent. Now, something shifted. It was 50-50 for many years. After the last recession, 2007, 8, 9, the industry decided for no longer were they going to have faith in certain salons. So I'm just saying... Like it or not, yeah. how we're paid as hairdressers got nothing to do with it. Like it or not, there's an independent workforce. So they still need numbers. They still need reports. They need to control merchandise, inventory, balance their checkbook, pay taxes, and all this stuff. So what I love about this, this is very catered towards the independent. Where I see it for my big salons, I could see us doing, you know, uh, chair side checkout, starting to work with things instead of why would I have you sit yeah. in my salon for three hours to go make you wait online to go pay? Right. Just like a beautiful restaurant, dining. I see so many implications, but I'm just saying, um, you know, I, I'm going to do this whole Barry Manilow thing. And now for my next number, meaning I am ex inspired by numbers. Yeah. Numbers speak to me. You know, it's like uh, it's a beautiful thing. So I think hairdressers, they start to get it and the simple part of it and the, the graphics and all the thing. It, it speaks hairdresser too. And I think they're going to love it. And the choices and options of which device you want to run it on. Used to be to say, oh, I'm going to get into software. Well, I can't afford software. I'm not into it. What I love about it is the price point. I don't care what budget. A friend of mine in London, Angus's future wife, their mom and dad own a salon. Okay. I said, I'm going to get you Mevo. It's a six-chair salon. I said, I'm going to hook you up. I know some people. And she goes, oh, I can't afford a computer. I said, buy an iPod or I'll give you an iPod. There's no reason. And money I'll never take as an excuse. When people say, well, if I had your money, I'd do that. The smartest shit I ever did as a kid was when I had no money. The yeah. smartest thing JP and Paul ever did was when they had no money. Yeah. Some people get money, they get stupid. And I'm just <laughs> saying, let's not get stupid about this. Right. So to me, what John's doing, and I had a choice of which partner I po chose out of the beauty industry. There's other software companies. I interviewed six. But John spoke to me like no other. Yeah. And that was why I knew he would be the partner that we would choose at Paul Mitchell. 
And he would be a partner I would recommend anybody in the world that wanted software to go to because I think he understands our business. Yeah. And when he said yesterday at the opening of the event that he wants to help your lives be better, I believe him. Yeah. And that's why we're partners yeah, today. Yeah, the first time I went to, I was at this conference, it was, you just know, it's just like being at a Paul Mitchell, um, you know, the the uh, the gathering or yep. anything. Yep. It's, it's a feeling that you get that you're surrounded by a company that cares about the success of your business and, and they're smart. And that's what I love. Like it's not, you talk to any other company. I've talked to the other software companies that call my salon and you know, they don't, they don't understand frequency of visit. They don't, that, they're not focused on that. They're focused on making it, uh, something look good mm -hmm. and then putting it out well, there. They got all the graphs, all the bells and whistles, yeah. all the stuff, but what, got me with John. He said, what is your reservation to do when she comes to work? She takes her coat off and waits for the phone to ring. Then he showed me an active list. He showed me what she could do. And suddenly that day's business changed. And we decided as a company now that we have the power to shift it every day. Yeah. And we do it every single day. We keep score and we do more. The old way was looking a quarter, looking a month back, a week past payroll, and wondering where we went wrong. You yeah, can't fix looking it. looking at the past. Day to day, day to day, and I'm just saying, we've recovered a company that lost millions of dollars during the recession, thanks to John, from frequency of visit, all the data points. I love being a coach for the industry, so they'll ask me a question, I give them the answer, and they don't like the answer, meaning you don't really want to hear the truth. Right. Numbers don't lie. The old way of running the business was emotion. The new way is running on statistics and knowing that there's actually a DNA of success. And if you really say what you mean and you mean what you say, you want to be successful, these are the things you got to do. And once a kid learns that from me, no matter where they go in the world, open their own salon, move down the street, whatever, they will be successful. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I did. I, you know, I listened to your CDs I've, uh, and um, seriously, Mm -hmm. over and over driving to Paul Mitchell classes back and forth in my car and you know you just implement I was able at 25 to buy Sam Burns salon yep, yep. and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it because I already had my roadmap and then from there I got to expand it and and you know develop it and try to make it my own feeling you know but it was great and that's where people need to to be at these kind of events and at the gathering and yep. to hear people like you talk so that they can have that well, this is, John doesn't know this, but this is kind of fun because most of these people don't know me at this event, you know, so they kind of come in with this little, like, oh, I'm not going to touch him, he's going to sell me Paul Mitchell. Uh, but what I really do is sell people on the beauty of the industry, and I don't care who you do business with, I want you to love them. Uh, I make statements, are you in love with your hairdresser? Uh, we talk about, it matters who you do business with. So, you know, look at the companies you do business with. If they're good, tangible people, and you're doing business, you've got a great relationship, they're giving all you want, then stay with them. Yeah. I have no problem with that. There's exactly. enough for all of us. Right. Um, so I'm not trying to dominate the world but I do want to find a job for my future professionals because no matter where you go to school they need a job and a career path um, so to me if we could do something together it'd be getting people automated getting them on software because this is the advantage if we just like a language of hair cutting if we can all agree that we understand the word geometry we understand graduation we understand layer if the world kept score in a similar way we would be able to help each other in a much better right. way because we'd be comparing apples to apples. Yeah, That's what makes my job as a coach so difficult that people are working on paper books, not using technology. If you're not using technology today, I got a message for you. 1980 called, they want their 8-track back. <laughs> right. It is time for you to embrace it, uh, whether it's Twitter, Pinsta, I don't even know them all. I can't even keep up with it. I don't care what it is. Right. The old days to see Paul Mitchell, you had to go live and see the man on stage. The new way is using the internet, using the, the great force of technology to find out anything you want to do. I spend more time on my iPad than any other device, researching shows, music, choreography. I can find anything, inspiration yeah. with forks, anything you can imagine, music made with balloons, anything I can trigger in, I can find. Yeah. You know, so that's the part that I think is really gives a person a chance to really be active towards what they really want and the difference between me and maybe some of the listeners out there is 30 years of experience if you apply yourself today listening to what i say you can accelerate your experience and what took me 30 years right you could do in 10 right you can grasp you know i think i wasted a lot of time in my early 15 years of the industry the last 10 or 15 i've really accelerated a bit but i didn't sell myself short but what could i have done i'm just saying don't think, well, well, I'm 30 years in, I'll be successful. What can you do to accelerate? If you're doing five a day, that's making you five good. If you're doing 10 clients a day, you'll be better. Right. Uh, you want to double your experience, you've got to double your clientele. And that's not just to make more revenue, it'll help your speed pick up. Uh, a girl said to me yesterday, oh, I, I'm running behind all the time, and you know it takes me this long, and I did four haircuts in 20 minutes. I'm like, well, you're talking to the wrong guy. 
Now, you would never think your pace can quicken, but you hang out with a guy like me, it will quicken. Right. Because I used to hang out with my platform partner, Jean Bra. She'd have cut four heads, and I was still working on my first one. <laughs> right. And by the time I finished working with Jean as platform partners, my pace was a little superior to hers. Even the great Takashi, one of the fastest in the world, has a trouble keeping pace with me. Being a salon hairdresser is about having pace. Um, it's about, Stephanie calls it pacement. It's about understanding that time management is the key. And spending a week on a haircut is a beautiful thing if you're demonstrating and making a video. But real time, you've got to be able to move on a faster pace on certain times. Right. Um, so training is something people got to do. And I don't think you have to go to a show to do that. You could train on your own living room with a doll head, right. working with your, your pro tools. There's so many ways you can get into this. And it's something crazes me when I see people how little they're prepared to do for it like yeah. American Idol I want it so bad it's so funny because your actions don't say you do right if you truly wanted it you're going to do whatever it takes to get there and that's the remarkable people that we'll see in our future that will be the future leaders of the industry I mean the living room is where you prepare for it I mean the hair show you come here you get inspired but then you got to go home and you have to that's when you actually do the work and well. when it's not in front of people I mean that's that's where it comes from and then you come back to a show and get inspired again well you know, so it's, it's a beautiful opportunity we get we get to connect with people and i yeah. never take it for granted i do a lot of these shows you know that worldwide but it always means something to me people say well, what keeps you going how come you're always so excited i get from them their energy is what drives me yeah and i think i'll continue doing it until i know that when i'm out there and i'm looking in their eyes they're not with me anymore you know right. i'll s just smoothly slide off stage <laughs> but and he said, are you going to retire? I said, probably not. If, you know, to me, retirement is ending up doing what you love. I love this. Yeah. I love this job. So I would be crazy to say, do I ever want to give it up to do what? I've got this. Yeah, what are you going to do? Well, as a young kid, the circus came to town. I was six or seven. And they plotted up in my little neighborhood. And at the end, they told me they were taking me with them. And I was so devastated <laughs> when they'd left. And I was still left in my little town in Scotland. And I look later in life, and I realize I actually did run away with a circus and <laughs> I am part of the circus attraction you know so yeah. it's amazing what you can wish for um, we talked about Vidal and I want to kind of close with this I did a show in London in front of him before he passed away 6,000 hairdressers my mother was in the audience I dressed up as a transvestite clown and not knowing to me she was I, proud I finished at the break and he was up next and when he got up on stage he mentioned my name and that made my little mama who's no longer on the planet either just the proudest hairdressing mom of the world because Vidal Sassoon in front of six and a half thousand people mentioned my name. Right. Well, the next day, Takashi and I went up to visit her in Scotland. She lived in Glasgow and we were sitting in the living room. I think I cut her hair and then Takashi fixed it. <laughs> and then as we we're kind of getting ready to leave, my mom said, son, I'm so proud of you. I just want you to know that. But I have a question as your mother. When you were a wee boy, which means when you were a little boy, did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams you'd be traveling the world, having your photo taken, Vidal Sassoon mentioned your name, as a wee boy, did you ever imagine? I said, Mom, as a wee boy, that's all I ever imagined. Right. That's the beauty of the beauty industry. Whatever you can imagine, you can make happen. Yeah. Just like people before us did, from Vidal to Paul and et cetera, et cetera. So I never take it for granted. I never take it, you know, I want the audience to come, but I never take it for granted. They will. And I just think it's a big part of that kind of dreamer part of it and that's where hairdressing is so different you know i don't know if it guys go and get dreaming excited like we do we'll have to ask um him. <laughs> but to me it's about these this passion point and i think because we come from a different educational background i think that's why we're so good at delivering it so it's about tar touching people's hearts and souls and i think that's the the dedication hairdressers have to have we have chosen to be servants to the people right and that's an honor and you've got to do it with 100 percent pride at any level and whether you're a platform artist working with cutie models or whether you're a hairdresser behind the chair we have a beautiful job that we want to take care of and make everybody in the world see their hairdresser in a better light thank you for Vidal putting out that first impression uh, we all owe it to each other to be this good yeah and anybody who doesn't unfortunately are hurting the whole industry and I'm just saying we got to get better we got to get smarter and we got to attract even more vibrant people so what you and I do today are not just going to help the people in the industry. It's going to attract tomorrow's kids. I've had more kids went to beauty school because they got a load of me. Right. Just saying that's a power when you've got kids that were never thinking about going, I'm going to be a hairdresser just like yeah. him. 
that's a beautiful thing. And I think the better we all do, then we're going to start to bring in a whole different gene pool of people that's going to help our industry go even further. Awesome. Well, I know there was a lot of things you could have done. You just skipped lunch for this. So thank you very much, My Robert. Pleasure, Matt. Um, make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Do you want to plug anything? Uh, you, you guys look at me. It's robertcromies.com. You can check me out on Facebook anywhere you want to talk to me. I love to hear from the people. Cool. I don't quite have your network going on there. Well, uh, I'm working very... Well, I'm sure I'll get a few hits from you. I got <laughs> some major tweets yesterday. I was a rock star <laughs> yesterday. 2.2 2 million. <laughs> Jesus, nice. I feel like Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing about it is you got to put it out there, and I really admire what you're doing. I watch your numbers. I see the people. You're connecting to the people. You have a voice, young man. Thank you. Do the I right thing with that. it always. In any way we can help each other, you can always count on me. All right, Robert. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Robert Cromines. Um, it was definitely a, a, a big honor for me to be able to sit down with him and just kind of chat. You know, it's fun to talk to. I look at I look at the fact that, you know, I didn't know that was going to happen at there. So there's a million questions I probably could have asked that now I'm like, oh, I wish I would have. But, yeah. you know, but next time there will be another time, uh, you know, and we'll we'll, we'll get, get into in that. Here. So we have questions from social media. Um, if you want. On your phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I just asked the question last night. We're looking for questions. So Starting at the top here. You follow us on Facebook. You have a chance to write questions as well. Um, yeah, just start at the top. And All right. Lydia like Sanchez. I am currently in cosmetology school and would like to know what is something you never learned in school and wish someone would have told you before. And I would love to spin the wheel, by the way. Wouldn't we all? Yeah. <laughs> um, something that wasn't told to me in beauty school. <laughs> I don't know. I think when I was in school, I, I had the fortune of having some really great instructors that wanted us to have real world knowledge. I mean, of course, there's a million things that I've learned since then. There's, I've learned way more since then than I probably did then. Um, I don't know. Maybe just to have faith in myself to use knowledge of what a haircut should be rather than try to recreate a haircut every single time. Yeah. Because I felt like in school it was, this is how this haircut is done always forever rather than just trusting myself to know what's going to happen when I put that kind of shape on that kind of head and all that stuff. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Yeah. I think in school I wish, the one thing I wish was taught in school was head shape. Yeah. And not facial shape, but so I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like following the head shape with that, um, and being a little freer with color. Uh, people are. Oh, see, I was crazy with color. I saw a girl's picture yesterday, and I I wish I could bring it up and and show the picture and everything, but um, no, no, because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know if she would want, but it was such a stripy like color. It was like what we were doing in beauty school with like the Kelly Clarkson like mm. stripes. And she said that she felt rushed, that her teacher, you know, they're, they're mm. trying to teach them to, to work quickly so she doesn't feel like she... And, and I get that. I get that struggle because you do have to work quick in the business, but beauty school is where you learn to work efficiently right? and to work, and to work clean and all that. Then, then start assisting and learning the flow of the salon. You're not going to learn the flow of the salon in a in beauty school. That's speed silly. happens on its own. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things. I used to get so frustrated with myself in beauty school because everything took me so long to do, and my one instructor really beat into my head. She's like, "So long as you keep doing it this way, keep being efficient, it will get faster on its own. Don't worry about speed right now." And what are you getting fast for, anyways? You got no clients, right? So there's really no point. Right. You know, and, and that's the thing. It, you could get really fast and be shitty at hair, but then in the end result is going to be you just doing really fast, shitty hair and no one's going to come back. They're going to run really fast away from you. Right. So work on quality first, then work on speed. Speed, will, like you said, will come. I mean, it, you'll, you'll learn that as you get busier. One day you're going to wake up, you're going to be fully booked for the day and you're going to want to start double booking. You're going to want to bring on an assistant or something. Um, then you'll learn to do that. It's just, it's, it's an evolution. So I guess we got to uh, keep it going. This is funny. How do you tell a client you no longer wish to provide services for them? How so, would, as, as our boss, how would you like us to tell our guests that they're fired? So Thad kind of had this situation recently, a little bit. He didn't tell her that she was fired, but there's, there's, 
you can't tell people they're fired. You can. You can. I've seen it. But, Not here, but I've seen it. I was I was assisting a girl one time that had to fire a client. She was such a nervous wreck that day. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I've i never had to do it, really. I let them fire themselves. Yeah, I let them fire I mean, fire I don't themselves. have to live with these people, so I don't care. Like, my one just recently, she's a total beast, total nightmare. It would ruin my whole week knowing that she was coming up, but I got through it, got through it, suffered through it, and then finally she calls one morning, poor Drea. She calls one morning and leaves a message saying, she's not coming back. This whole baloney about being treated a certain way and all this, that's just not true. And Dre's like nervous to tell me that there's this message. She goes, do you want to listen to it? I said, no, I don't care. I'm glad she's not coming back. <laughs> she's like, should we call her back? I said, no, I don't want her. That's fine. It's like, funny. We will be fine without her. I randomly run into people that don't come to the salon anymore because it's the reality of if some people fit and some people don't. Right. And and it used to bum me out for a long time. And now I'm like, I'll be at the gym or something and I see a client and I'm like, I'm so happy that they don't, they don't come because we don't get along. You know, I don't have friends. I'm not friends with everyone in the world because we don't all get along. It's just the way my business fits certain people. And, and that's really the reality of it. You have to figure out what stylists fit in your business. And then and you also have to figure out what clientele fits in your business and aim for them and cater to them and and not worry about everyone else. Hey Matt, did you want me to touch on this? Because I actually have uh, some advice that like one of my clients actually told me because he's in construction and like th- there's sometimes there's people that he doesn't want to work with. He's in construction? Yeah, so okay. Justin, uh, okay. he, he was talking to me about how like he and his uh, business partner just came back from a uh, site and the guy just really rubbed him the wrong way. Okay. He felt like it was going to be just like more of a hassle to do the, the job than to just like walk away. Um, what he suggested uh, that he does uh, is he'll uh, still put in a bid because he doesn't want to be rude, but he'll put it for a much higher uh, price. So like if that client's like coming in for color and stuff like that, maybe charge them more. Maybe do something like that. Don't rebook them. So, so you want to charge people more? <laughs> well, that, that's I what mean, that's what don't suggest yeah. booking. Yeah, right. yeah, that, yeah. That, that's what he did. Um, like, so when can we do book everything the complete opposite of what we've ever said. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Otherwise, like, because that's how you don't build a book. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. we have strategy for people we want to keep, and we have a strategy for people yeah, we just don't. do the exact opposite. Of yeah. What when we I tell you now, I'm just like, all right, you guys have a good one. <laughs> See you next month. All right. I hope you meet another hairdresser at a bar. Yeah. All right. Real quick. I like this last one um, from Michelle Brisson. How would you deal with a boss that is not very helpful with wanting to help build your clients with promotions when you are? I'm very motivated to start promos to get more clients when I'm new to the salon, especially when I work in a mall. So there's lots of opportunities. But she's saying no to all ideas. I say get a new job. Yes. Get a different boss. Yeah, Michelle. I mean, Michelle's been following us for a long time. Um, she just got the Bali box. Yep. So, which is fast. Like, she's in Canada. So, they got that quick. I think they just shipped it out a few days ago. Yeah, she did. So, um, Michelle, I would definitely say you're going to be in this business for a long time. And if you don't have a huge clientele already, um, go somewhere else because you can't. It's never going to get better. You're like never going to talk. You're going to talk her into doing promotions for you. And then there's going to be another battle in front on top of that education, right. something else. It's just if she's already if she's not even into to helping promote you and you're willing to do it. Most of the time, the owner wants to run a 20 percent off promotion and the staff, you got to get on board. Right. You know, like there should be no reason somebody that owns a business would not want to jump on somebody that's willing to do a promotion. I mean, that's the kind of boss that views that salon as just like a walk-in place and right. that's it yeah you don't need to promote i'm not going to promote you all right cool but if you're the kind of stylist that wants to put that time in to promote and find ways to build yourself then maybe that's just not you don't want right to be in that spot you. yeah so cool cool anything else I think I'm pretty good. Was that pretty much all of the comments on there? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple more that we can go over. There's Stephanie. Yeah. So let's uh, let's quickly. Uh, <laughs> what'd she say? Connect, man. It's like no. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, sorry. Um, we can let's quickly, Thad, real quick, get the wheel up here. We'll spin the wheel and then oh, yeah, that's right. Run off and do it's hair. Weird, not having. I know Drea. we don't have Drea. So the so we're Drea. We're not clamping it. You're our clamps. Well, there's no clamps yet. <laughs> nice muscles, <laughs> <laughs> muscle clamps. Um, so we Drea picked Bobby Wilson. So Bobby, uh, this wheel's for you. We have Amika. Uh, the free blow dryer. Millennium is three months free of Mevo. Um, we have Pivot Point DVD collection, a Bali box, and then all of the uh, fist logos are a t-shirt from uh, Shop FSE. Speaking of which, Dad's got the new shirt on. The black right. tank top with yeah, the fist. the tank. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then $25 gift card or $100 off scissors. So, Bobby, good luck. Brian, you want to spin? Give it a good one. <laughs> all right. I'm stronger than Thad. A volley box? Of course. Oh, that's how that's going to land on when so, I spin it. <laughs> Everyone's going to want you to spin from now on. I know. Dre just gets t-shirts. There you go, Thad. You can what? take it. So, Bobby, you want a volley box? Just send me your address. Uh, email it to matt at freesaloneducation.com. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's our, one of our first, it's only our second sponsor prize ever. Yeah. Wow. And of All course, right. I spun it. That's Congratulations. Exactly. And so, let's... Uh, Let's wrap it up. You got anything to say? Um, I think we're good. We got more steps coming. Super stoked about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of videos. We also have trending tresses. We recorded it a little bit different. We didn't even say Dre is not here today. We did oh, yeah. say it's guys day. She didn't notice. Dre is not here. Yeah, Dre is not here. She had something to do, but we did record uh, trending tresses in a different way. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Barrett's tip also will be coming up after that. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Robert Cromines. Hope um, you enjoyed episode 39, Sausage Fest. You know, I got it. <laughs> I have to say, I, I like this episode. I felt like it was not as, maybe we didn't laugh as much, but I think we got down to business. We did. We got a lot done. Yeah. So it's official. Drea and Barrett are distracting. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, guys, I hope and you enjoyed hilarious. it. Check us out. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Free Salon Education. Also, follow us on Twitter at Salon Education. And uh, Instagram? Hairstyle. That bull and eyes. That bull and eyes. Um, and we will, yeah, all of the, uh, I think that's it. I have nothing else to say. All right. Then all stop. Right. All right. I will. <laughs> We're going to do hair, guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. This is Drea Bolin from freesaloneducation.com and we're bringing you this week's trending tresses. First off, we have Allison Hannigan who has changed her red up a little bit this season. She is normally a richer, deeper red and she's gone for a more fiery orange copper color which is looking very fresh and bright this season. Lance Bass and Nicole Ritchie have been blowing up their Instagrams with pictures of their new blue, bright blue hair colors. Lance Bass's is pretty cool because it goes from a deeper blue all the way up to a lighter blue, giving it a nice ombre effect, which he has been giving lots of the hashtag love to Pravana. And next we have Vanessa Hudgens, who has taken out all of her extensions and joined the Long Bob Club, chopping it off to a nice one length, thanks blunt cut, which is pretty cool and in season right now. Sienna Miller has also joined the Long Bob Club, but hers is a little bit more asymmetrical and dramatic. It's just a little bit flirty and fun. And Kristen Stewart has also chopped off her hair into a very choppy, shaggy-esque look. Um, it still has the nice bright orange ends and her natural roots. Moving into Sierra, who has added great lengths to her style recently, she has added a ton of extensions with dreadlocks in there, giving her a nice multi-dimensional blonde and brunette mix intermixing with each other. And up next we have Helen Mirren, who has just recently admitted in an interview that she only sees the hairdresser once a year and in between those times she cut, has been known to cut her hair herself, often right before a red carpet event. And if you're a fan of Diane Keaton's style, click the link below to check out her new hair blog so you can see her thoughts and opinions on these crazy styles. This is Drea Bolin from freesaloneducation.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook so we can keep you up to date on all the hottest trending dresses. Hey guys, this is Barrett Philokana from FreeSalonEducation.com here with our tip of the week. This week I'm not going to do a full style on the hair, I'm just going to show how if you have a little bit thinner hair and you still want that front crown braid or just the front braid in the front when you're going to do an up style or 
just wear it down, how to make it look a little bit more plump. So here we go. Okay, so there's two ways you can go about this. You can see that I already did the French braid all the way down until you could just do the three strand braid. Put the elastic in it. If you have a little bit of hair that's gonna fall over the braid, the one thing I would say to do, take, two, take a bobby pin in your hand, not a hairpin, make sure it's a bobby pin, and you're just gonna push it forward so that you get a little bit of lift in the front and then all you would have to do is throw that bo one bobby pin in there to hold it in there and then the rest of the hair from the up style would fall over that. The other way to do it, same way to start it, take either the tail of a teasing comb or any brush that you have and you're just going to pull some of these pieces out while it's in the braid. Don't feel like you're pulling the braid out because you have the foundation set in with the elastic right now. So you're pulling out and you can see that you're starting to get a little bit of volume in the front. You can pull the hair as high as you want to get it and then hairspray it where you need it to stay or as little as you need to do. So I'm just going to pull these front pieces a little lower even with my hand just so that it lies on the face a little bit. And then what you're going to do, you're going to take the elastic actually out of the hair because the braid's not going to go all the way. The braid's just in the front of the hair. So just to get a little bit more lift to the side. And I'm going to hairspray that just with a heavier hairspray. And go back in one more time with the tail of my comb and pull it out, pull it up and down towards the face if you want more of the braid on the face. And then going into your up style, you're just going to take these and pin these under everything else that you're going to do to lock it in. Same thing we've always done. Take two bobby pins and lock it in with a cross. And that's all you need to do just to make thinner hair look like it has a little bit more depth and a little bit more height with a front braid. Stay tuned next week for our next tip of the week on splitting hairs. Thanks guys. I just broke up with you and now I'm sure I'll be the bad guy too. All right, so that guy's rolling uh, this week. got so much stuff. <laughs> it's Christmas. Look at how it loses color when I stretch my foot out. That is terrible. It looks like elephantitis. Ugh. Gross. It hurts to cross my legs. <laughs> Look. I'm just gonna sit like this so I don't hurt myself. Alright, ready? <coughs> Dad, do I look like a roly poly? Sit up straight, you won't. I'm, I can't. No, you can. I can't stop. <laughs> what do you mean by a roly Like, where, where am I at with the camera here? All, all of me, right? <laughs> Like essentially, like down to like the white taper and uh, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. That's fine, but am I blending in? I'm gonna get you spanks in the blackness. You'll feel better yeah, about I mean, this. Yeah, I mean the shirt's uh, buckling, but it's not like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This Very shirt's kind of you. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Well, well this damn shirt. <laughs> well, I don't want making you to go like in a belly. And, 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 like, <laughs> like see, see that the like, like see how my shirt's going like this? Yes, <laughs> it's doing that. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, what he's trying to ask you is, does he look fat? Yeah, that was my manly way of doing it. I don't, I don't think so. Thank but, you, Dad. But at the same time, I didn't want him to go. Dad go. had a very man answer for that too. What's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that's me. Is he going or not going? Okay. You're taking pictures of me. Oh, uh, every time. <laughs> We're four minutes past. Oh, hold on. Past what? When I wanted to start. Your imaginary start time? For four minutes late or four minutes late? I don't have an imaginary start time. <laughs> and it just never happens. Right. Ever. In 30, what is this, nine episodes? Are we on 39? Not 40, is right? Is it 38 or 39? 39. 39. No, we're not on 40. Yeah, it's 39. 39. There's no way are we on 40 yet. Yeah. That's going to be a party. Party. Fine. It'll just be 39 slash 40. That's why next week has to be at night because it's going to be a party. I'm hot up in his bitch. I know. We got the air cranked? No, it's the, my sunburn. 68. And the fact that you're layered I'm like layered. it's not you're July. You're ready for winter. <laughs> Brian's sunburn. I know. Guess what season it is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was thinking about that. I was like, Brian's totally going to wear the tank top tonight and I'm wearing a, a turtleneck. Yeah. 
Brian's actually in Hawaii and Matt's uh, filming from I know, Alaska. Matt's on location in Poland <laughs> in the dead of winter. We, we just do a really good job of filming it to make sure it look like you guys are saying it to each other. There's a splice right here. If I were to reach across, my hand would disappear because <laughs> you don't know. All right. You put the two shots together. I gotcha, I gotcha. Are we... we should try that. We should. I still want to do the green screen. Oh, God. I saw something the other day. Maybe Some... episode 40 is green screen episode. I saw a show with a good green screen the other day. It was a bunch of kids playing around with the green screen. I'm like, eh, that's what yeah. we're going to look like if we do it. Hi, I'm in Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want to do. I want to have Delaware behind <laughs> behind us. I want us to time. wear green and just be floating heads. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, oh, splitting hairs, floating heads. Well, I told you about the floating scissor thing that I want to do, right? Oh, yeah. So I want to wear a green suit and do an entire haircut so only the scissors are showing. But you wouldn't see the scissors. You would see the scissors. But your fingers would be through it. There'd be areas that you're blocking. Yeah, it, would it wouldn't a really funny, work. But it would still be cool. Well, did you ever? <laughs> if you sped it up really fast. You were in Vegas that year that Takashi did something kind of like that with the people all dressed in black, like lifting the girl up. Yeah. That was, that was cool. It was like the opposite. That was cool. All right, we should get the show on the road. What do you think? Ready? Ready? I've, I had my stuff done along with Drea. We were prepared. an hour ago. Brian has one job before the show starts, and it's to read that paper that I worked on last night. And it was done an hour yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to Splitting Hairs. What is that face? Episode. I don't know. I think it's, it's a uh, face of. There's a million emotions that go through when I listen to a conversation <laughs> that we have. I think the tank top brought out a little bit more sass. And you know what's crazy? Yup. Is not only do I have to have this conversation with you once, you have to listen to but it. I have to re listen to it and edit it over and over again. God, that must be hell. All week long. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. This is Matt Beck from... <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, here we are. <laughs> you don't warn us. We need like a three... One second. Like, there's no warning. It's just, oh, shit. Here we go. Action. Actually, I really just wanted to have a deeper voice when I did that. <laughs> I was like, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. This is Matt Beck. <laughs> Welcome to Hello, Hills. guys. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> this is episode thirty-nine. Okay. <laughs> Little <off the> face. <laughs> oh, we got so much to talk about. All right, let's do this. Waiting on you. Ready? 